This is a special edition of the Lars Larson Show, the 2018 GOP gubernatorial primary debate. Now, here's Lars Larson. Welcome to the Lars Larson Show on the Radio Northwest Network. Today, I'm in the Bloodworks Live studio of our flagship station, FM News 101 KXL. We're on 23 other radio stations around Oregon, Washington, and Idaho. I'm sponsoring the only full debate of all three candidates for Oregon governor on the Republican side. This debate is being streamed live on our Facebook page. It's on stream from LarsLarson.com and will be available for podcast after the debate. Now, each of the candidates has agreed to appear in a general election debate this fall if he wants wins the nomination. Governor Kate Brown, the expected standard bearer of the Democrat Party, has not responded to our repeated invitations, but she's welcome to join the next governor of Oregon on this stage in October to make her case for continued employment. I don't vote in Oregon, but I spent the majority of my life here. I work here. I love the state, and I want to see it led by a conservative governor who takes it out of the swamp of corruption, debt, and destruction created by one-third of a century of Democrat rule. The candidates in alphabetical order for starters. Newt Bueller, an orthopedic surgeon from Central Oregon from the town of Bend, who has served as a representative in the Oregon legislature. Sam Carpenter, also from Central Oregon, has a blue-collar background of work in history and a history of helping to turn around troubled companies, both big and small, as a consultant. Greg Woldridge, a 27-year retired Navy captain and the only commanding officer to lead the Navy's precision aerobatic team, the Blue Angels, for three separate tours. The three candidates drew straws today for who opens, goes second, and third. Closing statements will be in reverse order. We'll begin with Dr. Bueller. Thank you, Lars. Oregon needs a new governor. We're clearly at the crossroads. And I'm the candidate that can defeat Kate Brown. And I'll lead where Kate Brown has repeatedly failed. Now, I realize that I'm not the most conservative candidate running in this race, and I'm certainly not the dashing naval pilot like Captain Woolrich, who's served this nation with such distinction. But I can assure you I've already fought hard against Governor Brown and a very liberal Democratic legislature, and I fought hard on taxes. I fought all of them. I fought hard on on government regulations of small business, and I've fought hard on on rural Oregonian issues, protecting rural Oregonians from extreme environmental policies. Now, admittedly, I've broken from my party from time to time, uh, independent-natured guys, but, you know, I don't believe that to be a good Republican, you need to agree with me 100% of the time, and I think we can all agree on that. And together, I know we can win, and I know I'm the candidate that can defeat Governor Brown in the fall. Captain, uh, Captain Woldridge? Thanks, Lars. I'm so glad to be here. What an opportunity to express my viewpoints. The ship, the beautiful ship of Oregon is up on the rocks. It's got holes in the bow. We're taking on water. Four more years, the ship's going to sink. We've got to get a new captain. We've got a good crew. We need new leadership. We need a captain that can bring this ship off the shoals into smooth water. I've had 27 years in the Navy leading lots of wonderful organizations. I got to take on the toughest challenges, never elected, but often selected for the hardest jobs, leaving, leading the Blue Angels, leading Naval Air Station Lemoore. Now I want to lead the state of Oregon. I've been endorsed by the Tea Party, Oregon Right to Life, the good man Bill Post, and the Far West Ag Association. I'm ready for this job. I'm ready to do it. I'm fired up and ready to go. Thank you very much. Sam? Thank you, Lars, for putting this uh debate on. I appreciate it. Uh, You know, we're ready for the great Oregon turnaround, and it's been a failure putting moderate Republican candidates in a statewide race for 32 years. It's been three decades. We need to rally the base. If we don't have 100 percent of the base, we're never going to win a statewide contest. Uh, I am pro-gun, Second Amendment. I am pro-life. And I support our president, Donald Trump. I can't imagine how well he's going to be doing by the end of this uh, next cycle into November. I am the only candidate up here who has endorsed the president and has done that without failure since the beginning. November, he's going to be even doing much, much better. Uh, I invite people to compare the candidates by going to the websites and the Facebook pages and just comparing the content about who's ready, who's prepared to take Kate Brown on. 
Thank you. Sam Carpenter, thank you very much. Now, I introduced all three of you by your full name and title, as I should. But, gentlemen, let's agree that this hour we're going to be on a first-name basis. I'm Lars, and uh, I'm glad to have you be here. I've worked hard. Uh, I don't usually write questions down, but I wanted to get as much in this hour as we possibly can. So, candidates, let's start with the president you would have to work with as governor. And before we get to taxes or schools or PERS or forests or illegal aliens or the death penalty, which are all on the agenda, Sam and Greg, you can respond in just a moment. But I want to start with uh, Newt. Newt, when Donald Trump announced for president three years ago, you called him angry, self-absorbed, uninformed, out of touch. He has no place as leader of the Republican Party. How will you get the Oregon Trump vote that was there two years ago, and how would you work with President Trump as governor of this state? Yeah, Lars, you know, I don't believe in blind lo loyalty to anybody but my wife. And when President Trump is right, and I'll, I'll agree with President Trump when he's wrong, and I have, I'll, I'll disagree with him. And I think that what, that's what Oregonians expect. Uh, I, will, uh, I will have one boss when I am uh, governor, and that's the people of Oregon. And I have one oath, and that's to the U.S. Constitution. Uh, and I'm an independent-minded person, and I'll call it out, call each issue as I see it. I'm going to take follow-ups as well. Do you take back what you said three years ago, or, or is, do you still stand by that? Yeah, there's lots of things that people say during, during uh, uh during campaigns. Uh, and uh, many times I don't see eye to eye in, in how President uh, Trump uh, communicates in terms of a divisive speech. Uh, for example, in terms of uh, his reaction to Charlottesville, in terms of the moral certainty. But I, I do agree sometimes with regards to his tax cuts, with regards to backing down on regulations, in terms of, of securing our borders and having more reasonable immigration. Those are the types of things I'll work uh, cooperatively with President Trump. By the way, gentlemen, all the way through this, I'm going to rotate all your names so that you're going to each get a chance to be first second or third. Sam, what's your response to that and what Dr. Bueller said about President Trump? Well, I have supported President Trump from the beginning. I was the only statewide or otherwise candidate in 2016 in my unsuccessful bid for the U.S. Senate to endorse the man. Uh, being, here's a statistic, 90 percent of Republicans support our president, 70 percent strongly. And this debate is about who can beat Kate Brown. And if you've alienated 90% of the base before you even begin, never mind the gun grabbing, never mind the pro-choice stance, there is no way Newt can take Kate Brown in November. Greg? Thanks, Lars. Uh, president Trump, look what he's done. He's done something that no other president has done in 25 years of rattling the nuclear sword in North Korea. He's going to bring them down. You've got to like that. You got to like his tax cuts. He's doing some really good things. Now, is my style like his? The only thing I get up at three o'clock in the morning is, no, oh, never mind. <laughs> but, you know, he's doing good things. And uh, I went to the 2016 convention for President Trump as a guest to support his nomination. So he's doing good things, not my style. But I agree with him on many things. Understood. Greg, I'm going to make you do a fast turnaround sure. because I've tried to rotate your names evenly. Uh, Governor Brown just signed a new massive tax hike. Is that good for Oregon? And would you promise standing here today not to sign any new taxes or any new increases in existing taxes? I do. I promise not to sign any new tax increases or any promises of them. We've got to stop that. We've got to get spending under control. We've got to get waste in our agencies under control. No way. For her to take that small business cut away from them, $250 million a year, that was an abomination. That raises their taxes when they had an opportunity to profit from them by recapitalizing and making more jobs. So, right. no, I'm not going to raise taxes. Thank you, Greg. Sam, uh, any new taxes? Would you vow now not to sign any new ones or raise any existing taxes? I will. And if I have a minute, I'm not going to repeat all the problems we know are out there. And this 20 percent that we're not going to get to write off is devastating for small businesses in, in Oregon. I'll say that much. But what's not being talked about, we have great problem identifiers here, is problem solving. How are we going to solve this problem? We need to get a red trifecta. We need a Republican House. We need a Republican Senate. And if your candidate isn't foaming at the mouth for a red trifecta, these changes aren't going to happen. And the candidate, the nominee, needs to be pumping for five and a half months with every swing district to get the red trifecta 
in addition to the gubernatorial seat. Now, you've served in the legislature. Would yeah. you commit to say, I'm not going to support any new taxes? Uh, you know, it's clear to me serving in the legislature that Kate Brown likes to raise taxes, uh, and apparently Sam doesn't like to pay taxes, and I'll cut taxes. And I think it's clear that uh, we have a problem here, not with, with, uh, with our tax structure, but with our cost. Our costs are out of control. It continues to raise double digits every, every budget cycle. Uh, we need to lower the, the cost of doing business in this state, and we need to get the cost structure under control in the state of Oregon. And if I see a big tax increase coming from Tina Kotek, I can guarantee you I'll be vetoing it as your governor. By the way, Sam, we'll get to the tax issue <laughs> and we'll get to military records and a few other things. But one of the hottest issues in this state has been the issue of Initiative Petition 43, even before signatures begin to be collected. They're not being collected yet. It may or may not make the ballot. But I'm going to be asking about that coming up in just a moment with a Second Amendment question that a lot of you have emailed me about when you knew that this, was deba this debate was coming up. You're listening to the first and only 2018 Oregon gubernatorial debate with candidates Sam Carpenter, Greg Woldridge, and Newt Bueller live on the Radio Northwest Network. It's flagship station FM News 101 KXL and the Lars Larson Show. We'll be right back. Portland's best traffic always comes from FM News 101 KXL. Jim Freddy has it for you. Hey, thanks, Lars. This report brought to you by Shriners Hospital for Children of Portland. They specialize in expert pediatric orthopedic care regardless of the family's ability to pay. Go to portlandshrinershospital.org for details. Not too bad of a drive out there right now. A little bit of slowing inbound on the sunset, starting back towards Sylvan down to the Vista Ridge Tunnel. Give yourself 14 minutes to get through that section. I-5 southbound out of Vancouver. That's a pretty busy drive. 11 minutes from the Interstate Bridge down to the Fremont Bridge. A little bit of bunching up as you leave uh, the I-5 area on I-84. Also, westbound on 84 is a little slow as you approach I-5. With Portland's most traffic 24-7, I'm Jim Ferretti. Now here's KGW's Rod Hill with the forecast. Had a little bit of snow yesterday and last night up at Timberline Lodge, but those cascade temperatures are warming today. And for the final day of the season at Mount Hood Meadows, which will be on Saturday, it'll be about 60 degrees at the lodge there. Back in Portland, mostly sunny 71 today. We'll go sunny 83 tomorrow and 88 on Sunday. I'm KGW's Rod Hill for FM News 101. What just happened? Hey there, it's Lars. If you're renting or a current homeowner looking to upsize, downsize, or just try out a new neighborhood, now's the time to make your move. And with mortgage rates still competitively low and home equity on the rise, you can feel confident you're making the right investment for your future. So get the pre-approval process started now before you shop around and you'll be one step closer to your new dream home. Call my friends, the salary-based mortgage consultants at American Financing. You'll learn more about down payment assistance programs as well as loan programs that can be customized to meet your current financial goals. You've heard me talk about using them myself, and I have several times. I guarantee you I'll use American Financing again. That, they are that good. It's worth it to take 10 minutes and give them a call or fill out an application online. American Financing makes the process easy and enjoyable. Call 503-452-4444. That's 452-4444 or AmericanFinancing.net. NMLS 182334. From the farm to the garden, Moen Machinery is your first stop for quality equipment. Family owned and operated for the last 71 years makes Moen Machinery the place to go for everything Kubota. Kubota tractors are designed for those who demand more. Take command of your lawn care needs with a Kubota Commander Zero Turn Mower and get commercial results for a residential price. Maneuver through landscapes with outstanding performance, comfort, and ease with 40 42, 48, or 54-inch mower decks. Now, take advantage of Kubota's quality and durability with 0% APR financing for up to 48 months or great customer instant rebates. Now through June 30th, 2018. See us or go to KubotaUSA.com for more information. Moen Machinery is the place to go for all things Kubota. Stop by and let the experts put you behind the wheel of a new Kubota tractor today. Moen Machinery on Hogan Road in Gresham, 503-666-9159 or online at moenmachinery.com. Your diesel is different, so don't go broke taking it to those dealers. Bring it to Precision Diesel. We handle it all, you name it. Precision Diesel Truck and Equipment Repair. Getting you back on the road quickly is our number one priority. Conveniently located between Jubitz and Freightliner. All across the country, even in California, law enforcement officials reject sanctuary laws that shield illegal aliens from detection, allowing them to hide in plain sight right in our communities. 
sanctuary policies prohibit local law enforcement officers from cooperating with federal immigration authorities. Those dangerous policies put everyone at risk. It's Lars Larson. I see the stories almost every week of illegal aliens involved in crimes that hit you and your community. Here in Oregon, the Stop Oregon Sanctuaries campaign is working to repeal the statute that makes Oregon a de facto sanctuary state. Your signature helps get Initiative Petition 22 on the 2018 ballot. Go to StopOregonSanctuaries.org and print your own petition. It's simple. Then just sign, date, and mail. It's just that easy. Go to StopOregonSanctuaries.org. That's StopOregonSanctuaries.org. Do it today. Save our community. Hi, this is Bob Vila. I've spent my career bringing out the potential in homes across the country. And as any small business owner knows, realizing potential requires working capital. That's why I'd like to introduce you to Cabbage. Cabbage has provided access to more than $4 billion in funding to over 130,000 businesses. With Cabbage, you can be approved for flexible access to a line of credit of up to $250,000. Apply online and get a quick decision. Once approved, you can draw from your line anytime you need to pay employees or cover unexpected expenses. Just withdraw the amount you need using your computer, the Cabbage mobile app, or the Cabbage card, anywhere Visa is accepted. Visit cabbage.com slash potential or call 855-CABBAGE to get $100 back when you take your first loan. That's 855-CABBAGE with a K. Credit lines and pricing are subject to periodic review and change. This is not a revolving account. Individual requests for capital or separate installment loans. All Cabbage business loans are issued by Celtic Bank, a Utah chartered industrial bank, member FDIC. Happy Friday and happy weekend, moms. Mm -hmm. We're Cooper and Lucinda. On Portland's afternoon news, the top Republican contenders for governor go head-to-head -head only on KXL. Hundreds of teachers pay at stake in Beaverton. What we should know before the big vote. Join us at 4. FM News 101. You're listening to a special edition of the Lars Larson Show, the 2018 GOP gubernatorial primary debate. Now, here's Lars Larson. Welcome back to the program. Of course, we have the three candidates here, the front runners in the Republican race, and we're live from the Bloodworks Live studio. Let me get right to an issue that is front and center for Oregonians, even though, as I said, ballot measure signatures have not been started to be gathered because the ballot title has only been certified. There's been a public comment process. But if Initiative Petition 43 makes the ballot, which calls for surrender or confiscation of the majority of firearms in Oregon, will you as governor enforce it or as many county sheriffs have promised to do, refuse to enforce it? Let's start with Newt. Yeah, I, I, I am a strong supporter of the, the Second Amendment amendment. Uh, uh, Lars, uh, in the four years that I've been running for office, I've gotten two A rankings and one B from the, the NRA. Uh, and I, I really think uh, we need to have a, a problem to gun-related violence, but it's not taking away uh, a loyal and uh, law-abiding citizens' rights, fundamental rights. Uh, now, if you're a convicted criminal, uh, in, in fact, I'd want to know from Sam why he thinks a convicted criminal of, of domestic abuse or, or stalking uh, should have the same rights as a decorated veteran like uh, like uh, Greg Woolrich. All right, so you would refuse to enforce it as governor. Say say the question. Would the... you refuse to enforce it as governor? Because part of this has to do with the state police establishing a registry where everyone who wants to keep yeah, a I, number I, of I, guns that I own, yeah. uh, you know, would Cer not be allowed to do it. Certainly, I would I would refuse to enforce it. All right, Sam, let's go to you next. Would you refuse to enforce it, uh, or would you enforce it? I talk about getting inside the machinery of a business when we fix businesses. I need to get inside the machine to look at it. I will follow the law. Whatever the law is, I'm going to follow the law. What we need to do is prevent 43 from becoming a law. And the way we do that is with a great turnout here in Oregon in November. And that's going to happen. There is no doubt in my mind that we're going to defeat that measure and we're not going to have to deal with whether it's legal or not. But Sam, I have to follow up. If it does become law and if you do become the governor, you would say you would enforce that law even though it effectively confiscates about half the firearms in the state. What I said was, I need to get in the machinery. I'm going to dodge the question, if you want to call it that. Okay. i got to get inside. I hey, I hey got Lars, I won't dodge that question. I won't enforce uh, that law. It's unconstitutional, and that's what it takes being a leader, is to stand up and say, these things are wrong, and press the Oregon, Oregon Firearms Federation gave you NF. I know, but Sam, you would enforce IP43. I will get inside the machinery and look at the law. What does as, that mean? As governor, I'm going to enforce the law, whatever it is. 
Okay. Whatever you want to talk about here, I, it's my job to enforce the law. I will do what I can to prevent bad laws from happening. And I've gone on record as saying this can't happen and 44 can't happen either. Let's I'm, go to Greg. Greg? Lars, I would not enforce that law. Good leaders have the courage to stand alone and the courage to go against things that are just not right. When IP43 was 42, I was against it. And then it became 43. I'm against it. It needs not to pass. Now, here's the beauty. What if it does get on the ballot? Can you imagine the folks in the rural areas of Oregon turning out like they've never turned out before? Oh, yeah. It would almost be a thing of beauty. Oh, yeah. Right? It, it, you know, in some ways, it, there is a silver <laughs> lining in there. Gentlemen, let's move to the next one. Newt, your ad suggests that Sam is a deadbeat who doesn't pay his taxes. Sam, how do you respond to that? Uh, Newt and Greg have wildly mischaracterized me. 21 liens? No, Newt. There were three instances. No. Look at the record, Sam. These I'm are talking no, 21 let, let, let's Sam, let's It's Sam my Sam turn. We'll get to you next, 22 Newt. years. That's wrong, and that's libelous. Now, well, you're a public you, figure, so it's <laughs> have your lawyer send me a letter, Sam. Have your well, lawyer send me a letter. We've talked to lawyers. Can I finish? Sure. Okay. I've been mischaracterized, and there is a, a point on my website on the front page called Disputing Accusations. And you have mischaracterized me with a million dollars over the last three weeks. Over the last three weeks, everything you've said has been either a distortion or a complete lie. And, Greg, you've done the same thing. How come you guys are ganging up on me? What's the problem? Because you have a problem with and why the would truth. you, why okay, would Gentlemen, we've got to move to the next part, which is Newt, um, or Sam, you call the doctor pro-abortion and anti-Second Amendment. Newt, what's your response to that? Yeah, I'm pro-choice, but, Lars, I'm clearly not pro-abortion. I think the best way that we can get enough people together on this issue is to make abortion as rare as possible. So that's you're what for, I've done. You're that's for killing done babies. The Sam, don't like that's what I've done in the legislature is prevent abortions. In fact, the law that I helped write and pass has decreased abortions almost 20 percent. I think that's something we all should be glad about. You know, that's that, that's leadership. When you bring people from both parties, from the left and the right together to accomplish some real positive change, not only for women's health, but also for the entire state in terms of ending this di divisiveness. All right, Greg, one quick one because we got 40 seconds. You flat out accused Sam Carpenter of lying about his military service. What's your evidence? He did not serve, first of all, and the tests that he said he took in Puerto Rico, we can't find evidence of that. So I would say there's not much there, really. There's not much to prove that you did serve. And by the way, Sam, your desperation doesn't serve you well. It Sam, won't, it won't serve the governor of Oregon Greg, well. Sorry, either. but I, I appreciate that. You know what? I'm going to get Sam's response when we come back. We're up against a break. We'll be back in just a moment. You're listening to the first and only 2018 Oregon gubernatorial debate live on the Radio Northwest Network from the Bloodworks Live Studio. It's the Lars Larson Show. Stay connected to the Northwest and the world with FM News 101 KXL. And good afternoon, Portland. Happy Friday. KXL News Time is 1.30. I'm Jordan Schultz. The U.S. is promising to help North Korea grow economically, but only if Kim Jong-un gives up his nuclear weapons. More from CBS News correspondent Bill Rakoff. Just back from a trip to North Korea, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says the United States is poised to help out North Korea economically if Kim Jong-un follows through with his pledges. If North Korea takes bold action to quickly denuclearize, the United States is prepared to work with North Korea to achieve prosperity on the par with our South Korean friends. Pompeo says the U.S. and South Korea remain committed to the permanent and verifiable denuclearization of the peninsula. Bill Rakoff, CBS News, Washington. Checking the market's closing bell numbers, a decent day for this Friday on the trading stocks. The Dow up 92, the Nasdaq lost two points, uh, the S&P 500, though, up five. Now Portland's most traffic 24-7. It's a service of the 24-7 Diabetic Health Hotline. Attention, diabetics. Now you can get your testing supplies delivered to your home, free delivery, and a free meter upgrade. Call the U.S. Medical Supply now, 800-430-7923. Now for the drive, we go to Jim Ferretti. Hey, Jordan, overall not bad out there. Inbound on the sunset. An extra seven minutes now, 217 down to the Vista Ridge Tunnel. Bulk of the slowing is past Sylvan down to the tunnel. Northbound 5, that doesn't look too bad. Getting up to Vancouver, just an extra five minutes right now. 217 southbound slow, 12 minutes now from 26 down to the I-5 split. 
And so far, no problems over on the east side of town. Just a little bit of slowing 84 as you leave I-5. All right. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. Let's toss it to KGW's Rod Hill. He's got our forecast. Had a little bit of snow yesterday and last night up at Timberline Lodge, but those cascade temperatures are warming today. And for the final day of the season at Mount Hood Meadows, which will be on Saturday, it'll be about 60 degrees at the lodge there. Back in Portland, mostly sunny 71 today. We'll go sunny 83 tomorrow and 88 on Sunday. I'm KGW's Rod Hill for FM News 101. You know it's been about a year that I've been sleeping on my pillow, and you've been hearing me drastically it can change your sleep it's certainly done a lot of good for me i wake up feeling rested and without any soreness in my neck or my back so what are you waiting for you need a my pillow it's amazing what a difference it makes for you it certainly made a difference for me and i'll save you some money go to mypillow.com click on the four pack special and type in promo code large you get 50 percent off a four pack of pillows that's two premium my pillows and two go anywhere pillows you get a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money-back guarantee you've got nothing to lose to get 50 50- percent off a four pack of pillows go to mypillow.com and click on the radio special or call 800-290-9466 and use promo code lars to get 50 percent off two my pillow premium pillows and two go anywhere pillows that's 800-290-9466 or go to mypillow.com and use promo code lars to get this unbelievable deal from mypillow.com what's up no seriously what's up there on your roof it's easy to forget it's been three to five years since you invited Roof Life of Oregon to perform our preventive maintenance magic. Our CCB number is 125208, rooflifeoforegon.com. Affordable without compromise. That's not easy to come by when shopping for a compact utility tractor. Unless you make a visit to a John Deere dealer where you'll find a high-performance machine at a reasonable price. Like the 1E, which offers property owners both auto-connected drive-over mower deck and quick park loader compatibility. Or the 3E, which packs the horsepower landscape professionals need to mow, grade, haul, and load. Test drive a 1E or 3E today at Clark County Lawn and Tractor at 179th and Northeast 72nd Avenue in Vancouver or visit cclawnandtractor.com. Comedy. Basil. Yes, dear. Drama. Mr. Darcy. Miss Bennett. Murder mystery. This is murder. Documentary. In the West is Carnarvon. It all sounds rather lovely with a British accent, doesn't it? BritBox is the biggest streaming collection of British telly ever. Indulge in loved classics from the BBC and ITV and discover exclusive new shows fresh from the UK. Escape to BritBox. Start your free trial today at BritBox.com. Did you know that in many cases, if you're over 59 and a half years old, you can roll over money from your 401k into a self-directed IRA while you're still employed by your company? It's called an in-service rollover. With a self-directed IRA, you can diversify your retirement portfolio to include equities, real estate, precious metals, cryptocurrency, or even buy your own business. While self-directed IRAs are nothing new, it's possible you're still stockbroker or accountant has never told you about them. That's why you need to call IRA Advantage. With more than 26 years experience in 1031 exchanges and self-directed IRAs, David and Tom Moore with IRA Advantage, a local Northwest company, have the expertise to set up a truly self-directed retirement account. Do your research and go to IRAAdvantage.com. That's IRAAdvantage.com. Then call IRA Advantage. Take it from me. If you have questions about self-directed IRAs, David and Tom Moore at IRA Advantage have the answers. With so many apps out there, ever wonder which one is the best for news? It's iHeartRadio. Not because we say so, because you do. Listen to the radio or a talk program created for views just like yours, all in one app. Download iHeartRadio app and stream this station now. Now, more of a special edition of the Lars Larson Show, the 2018 GOP gubernatorial primary debate. Here's Lars Larson. And here I am in the Bloodworks Live studio with Sam Carpenter, Greg Woldridge, and Newt Bueller. Just a moment ago, uh, you heard Greg mention, Sam, that uh, there are questions about military service. I wanted to give you a chance to answer that. I'm really surprised, Greg, as a military officer, that you would propagate a flat-out lie. I have never represented I've been in the military. And if you'd read the little paragraph on my website, you would have seen that. It didn't work to your benefit. And Newt, same thing, man. You do a little investigating before you throw charges out. On my website, check it out. Accusations, disputing accusations, and take a look. I was in Puerto Rico 47 years ago. I went through a battery of tests. They said, hey, you qualify for special forces. 
I was disqualified before I could enlist. That's been clear from day one. And you know that. And you know what you've Sam, done. out of time. I think you've answered it, though. Uh, let me go to the next one. Sure. Newt, let's start with you. The federal government owns most of the timberland in Oregon. Last year, Governor Brown wanted to put out the Chetco bar fire earlier than it was. She was told no by the feds and didn't have the courage to overrule them. Would you have overruled the feds and put it out? And how would you keep the Northwest Forest from burning? Yeah, uh, Lars, our, our national forests have been mismanaged for decades. And not only our forests, but actually how we for, uh, fight forest fires. Uh, we need to have a much more activist governor in terms of dealing with the national forest policy. We need to use, and I would as governor, the good neighbor authority, take over some of the management of these federal forest lands. Other states uh, like uh, Idaho and, and Wisconsin have done that effectively. I'll lead on this area where, where Governor Brown has clearly failed. And there's no more uh, better example than the failure of Governor Brown on this issue is these horrendous forest fires that we've seen every summer that uh, not only uh, decrease quality of life, but also have real health effects for people. We Greg, need to solve that problem. Thank you. Greg? I would go in and put that fire out, Lars. It's a safety issue and a, an economic issue for Oregon. You know, there's an old adage that's uh, better to beg forgiveness than ask permission. If it's endangering Oregon property and or the lives of Oregonians and the feds are sitting on it, I'm going to get it done. You get things done. Then I'll beg forgiveness if I have to. <laughs> and in the meantime, I'll go to Washington. You know, we've got a Trump administration. We've got people we can work with in the departments now. We've got to work this out. The BLM, the U.S. Forest Service, we've got to get these folks all aligned with our people and get folks like uh, Rob Ferris out there and showing them how to, get, how to get it working. Sam, how would you answer that? Well, we have to work with the president. It's federal land right now. Newt, that's going to be difficult for you after the things you've said. I and don't written. think so at all, Sam. And I, Greg, I, I think we see plenty of people. Greg, who, you first who started work with talking about Do Donald Trump about three days ago. So don't talk about working with the president. I can work with the president. But would you overrule the feds? If the feds said, don't put that fire out, as they did, of to course Governor I Brown. would. Of course I would. Right. Uh, the Biscuit Fire, the Silver Fire, and the, the Chetco Bar Fire all happened in the same terrain over the last 30 years. I'll work with Secretary Zinke. I'll work with the president. And we will get in there and clean that up. And that's what we need to do. I have a background in forestry. I know exactly what needs to be done in there. It just needs to be done. But if you're not cooperating with the president, if you can't sit down and talk to the president, it's not going to happen. All right. Newt, let's start with you. Will you as governor help the federal government catch illegal aliens and take that as broadly as you want? Right now, we have a sanctuary state, sanctuary cities, uh, a governor who says she'll put uh, a, a mayor across the street who says he'll go to jail to protect illegal aliens. Will you as governor say, I will cooperate with the federal government to catch illegal aliens in this state? Uh, better than that, Lars, I have an exam a, a voting record, an example of voting against sanctuary cities in just this last legislative session. Uh, I think we have a broken immigration policy here. Hey, we're a, a nation of, of immigrants. My, my grandparents were, were immigrants. Uh, my grandfather never even uh, learned to speak English, but we're also a nation of laws. And we need to have a governor that expects law enforcement to enforce our immigration laws. And that means cooperating, especially cooperating when we have criminals who have come under detention in the state of Oregon. Hey. Sam? It's like the Second Amendment. This can be a short answer. It's what it is. Of course, I'll, I'll work with the federal government. If somebody has created a crime in their life on the streets, they're gone. They should be deported. There's no latitude. We need our state police. We need our local police to be able to be enabled to work with ICE. And this needs to be taken care of. It's hurting our economy. It's hurting our social structure. It has to happen. It has to happen on day one. Greg? I will take us out of sanctuary state status. But I may not have to do that because IP22 is going to sail through, and we're going to get that done. It's right there, Lars. We're going to get it done. It's a public safety issue to me as far as letting felons out the back door of the jail to go out and harm our Oregonians. And the big thing is they go out and harm their own cultural centers. So they go back and hurt people that they're familiar with, and that's a bad thing. We can't let that happen. We'll put a stop to it. Sam, I'm going to start with you. We can agree, I think, that the schools are broken. Tens of billions of dollars spent, 
one of the shortest year, school years in America, one of the highest dropout rates, and some of the lowest test scores anywhere in America. Those are the metrics. Specifically, how would you fix the schools? Well, first of all, we have to have charter schools. We have to have school choice. We've got to be able to move our kids from school to school. The highest uh, escalating costs in our society right now are health care. Health care is one of them. Uh, education is the other. We need to free up the schools, free up the teachers. We need to break these, this union grip and have a free enterprise system in our schools. Homeschooling is fine, and this will be way up on top of my agenda to make this happen and make it happen quickly. We have to have competition in our schools. Newt? Lars, we have to rescue our kids, our teachers, and our public schools from an unacceptable status quo. It's the single biggest failure of Governor Brown is her indifference to fixing our underperforming public schools. And importantly, Lars, and I think just with the reports yesterday of what's been going on in Portland public schools with protecting a, a, a teacher who has been an abuser, abuser of, of young girls and, and women, uh, that's got to stop. We have to have a, a governor who is going to take on the unions and enforce behavior that's appropriate that people expect. Now, I have a daughter who, who's gone through public schools. I can't imagine having a, a union employee protected by some of the most powerful forces in this state. As governor, I'll stop that. Greg, I want to start with you on this one. Oregon public pensions are $50 billion in the red. What specifically would you do to fix that? And I mean specifically. Specifically, I'll do what everyone else talks about, and I'll turn it from a defined benefit into a defined contribution. The first employee, after we set that in, in motion, could be me. I'll go on the defined contribution, and we'll set up ways to train people how to work with that, and that will gradually reduce the PERS unfunded liability. We've got to do that. It affects infrastructure and education immensely. So we'll get that done. There won't be any new laws until we get that done. Sam, how would you do it? Well, our judges and our legislatures, legislators need to be taken off the plan, obviously. And I agree with Greg on a defined contribution plan. But there's something else. Uh, we have a $1.7 billion liability for 30 years, 10% of our general fund. Where is that going to come from? It's going to come from a booming economy. I'm talking about an economy that's growing at 6 or 8%. This will solve so many of our social problems, jobs, infrastructure, on down the line. That has to happen. We need more tax receipts, and that'll come along. And we have to have a reduced size government, a more efficient government. And that's what I do. I fix businesses. I fix broken organizations. I'm fully prepared to take care of this. Note specifics. Lars, this is an issue of vital concern. It's the 900-pound gorilla in Oregon politics that's eating all the, the, the dollars that should be going to kids to provide health care and infrastructure. Here's what I would do as Oregon's governor. I will not sign a single new spending bill until I have a PERS reform bill on my desk. I'd cap the big annual payouts, the, the bloody payouts at $150,000 a year. I'd get uh, public employees to pay into their retirement system. Uh, we're one of the few states in the nation that hasn't done that in the past. And importantly, like, like Greg mentioned, I think this is a real insight, is that we need to transition people away from a defined, contra uh, defined benefit to a 401k type plan. Sam, I'm going to start with you on this. This is the last question of this segment. 35 men sit right now in Oregon's death row. No Democrat governor has agreed to an execution in more than two decades with no legal basis for it. Yet Oregonians favor the death penalty. They've refused offers to repeal it. Will you commit to signing death warrants of those convicted who've had their appeals and then execute them? And if not, why not? It's a legislative decision. I'm not going to get in the middle of that. They will go to death row. If there is an exception that I think I should step in, I will step in. But uh, the, ju the judicial has spoken, and I will stand with the judicial. I'm not going to do a blanket uh, lock on, uh, on executions. I'm going to stay out of the way unless I need I'm to step unclear. in. I'm unclear. You have to sign the warrant. Kitzhaber did it and then decided it was immoral to do it, so he didn't do it the next time. Will you sign the death warrants or not? Yes, I will. Okay, very good. Greg? Yes, Lars, I will bring the death penalty back because it was in the Oregon Constitution. It was reaffirmed in 1984, and I believe in life. Because I believe in life, I don't think people should be killing other people without accountability. And because of that, I will bring back the death penalty. It'll be deserved, of course, and the judges now 
since I'm going to sign that warrant, are going to take maybe a little tighter look at what they're what they're prescribing. Newt? Lars, I'd enforce the death penalty, uh, death penalty uh, because it's the law of the land. It's in the Oregon Constitution. And most importantly, it was voted on and passed by the people of Oregon. Until the people of Oregon overturn the death p- penalty, I sign the warrants. All right, all three of you, start with Greg. I have one word answer. For all three of you, even though the strong disagreements you've got, will you support the eventual Republican nominee for governor, yes or no? Over Kate Brown, yes. Yes. I will support Greg Wilbrich. The jury's still out with regards to Sam's background. Too many open questions for me. Interesting. You're listening to the first and only 2018 Oregon gubernatorial debate with candidates Sam Carpenter, Greg Wooldridge, and Newt Bueller live on the Radio Northwest Network. It's flagship station FM News 101 KXL. And the Lars Larson Show from the Bloodworks Live studio. We'll be right back with closing statements. FM News 101 KXL. Here's Jim Ferretti. Hey, thanks, Lars. Is your new window quote giving you quote shock? Get triple pane windows for up to 60% less than most other companies. Double pane. How? Watch the video at Royal Exteriors, LLC.com, CCB number 206144. Give yourself an extra seven minutes if you're coming in from 217 down to the Vista Ridge Tunnel, westbound 26. It's a total 13-minute drive. 12-minute drive right now, 217 southbound, leaving Highway 26 down to I-5. I-5 northbound to Vancouver, not too bad overall. 11 minutes from the Fremont to the Interstate Bridge. And over on the east side of town, just bunching up as you leave I-5 eastbound on the Banfield. With Portland's most traffic, 20 for ready. Now here's KGW's Rod Hill with the weather forecast. All systems go for a great Mother's Day weekend. I have dry weather all locations. Over at the beach, if you're headed that direction, some early clouds. Otherwise, both days expected to see a fair amount of sun. Temperatures 60s to about 70 on Saturday. And much of the beach expected to be well up into the 70s on Mother's Day. Here in Portland, we'll go 83 and 88 with clear skies. I'm KGW's Rod Hill for FM News 101. A freshly paved surface at your home or business makes a great first impression. Call the pros at Signature Paving. I've done it. It'll save you a lot of money by making repairs or maintaining your pavement before it goes bad. I can tell you this from personal experience. Mike and his team at Signature, they're the ones to call. Our driveway had seen better days. It looked terrible a few years ago. Signature fixed that up quickly. It still looks great today. With occasional upkeep, it'll be safer and more attractive and has been for us. Regular maintenance extends the life of that asphalt while minimizing your cost. Business owners, Signature Paving has years of experience. They minimize disruption to your business while they're paving your lot. Call the pros at Signature Paving. They'll make your property look its best on time and all budget. Call today, 503-554-8553, or visit SignaturePavingServices.com. Signature, their name, your guarantee. CCB 135293. Seeing people smile, that's got to be the most enjoyable thing. Meet Ian Christopher, On Point member and owner of Portland's Coco Donuts. Something as simple as some sugar and flour uh, will create a moment for somebody. My business partners are longtime friends from high school. As the business grows, you need some financial support in order to get to that next level. So with On Point, getting into a credit line or loan to reinvest in new equipment, a new location, that's very helpful. Having that relationship to help further the business is crucial. On Point Community Credit Union is proud to support local businesses like Coco Donuts with highly tailored business banking and financing. Because at On Point, we know that thriving local businesses help build a thriving community. We're all putting in a little something to make it a little bit better for everyone else. That's On Point. On Point is federally insured by the National Credit Union Administration. Equal opportunity lender. DUI arrest using prescription medicine? Call Reynolds Defense Firm. This is Mac Daniel Reynolds with the Reynolds Defense Firm, and we specialize in one thing. We represent good people who face DUI charges. Quality of life for many people is vastly improved by using prescribed medicines for things like chronic pain, to sleep better, or to battle with anxiety or depression. What folks may not realize, though, is that driving after taking these medicines, even with a doctor's prescription, could still get you arrested for a DUI if an officer believes that using that medicine made you less sharp mentally or physically than you would be otherwise. This is a common mistake, and a way good people can find themselves arrested for a DUI. Reynolds Defense Firm's five lawyers together have nearly 50 years of Oregon criminal law experience, and I truly hope that never matters to you. As insurance, though, please take a moment to put Reynolds Defense Firm's contact information in your phone, because if you or someone you believe in ever is arrested for a DUI, that 50 years of experience will matter, and Reynolds Defense Firm will take care of you. Reynolds Defense Firm. We're solid. 
We're here if you need us, and we are very good at what we do. Hey, it's Lars for my good friends at First Call Heating and Cooling, your local independent train dealer. After a gloomy spring, it appears we're getting a taste of the warmer weather. I know I tell you every month, but I can't stress this enough. It is so important to have your air conditioner serviced and in good working condition before you turn it on. Call the pros at First Call Heating and Cooling. Schedule an appointment to service your AC. They'll make sure that you're nice and cool and your system is running properly. They installed a train system for us a long time ago and since then we always enjoy coming home to a comfortably cool home on a hot day enjoy your cool home too by calling first call heating and cooling their skilled tech service all brands their background checked they go above and beyond to keep your home clean don't wait till it heats up even more and you wait days for repairs call first call heating and cooling today and ask about their specials 503-231-3311 online firstcallheat.com and tell them lars sent you it's hard to stop a train ccb 72 623 monday a shop claiming to help fallen heroes placed his order and waited didn't get a return call so he called kyle a buyer beware warning this company's definitely on our radar verbal abuse monday at 11 on channel 8 here's what's happening at fm news 101 saturday may 12th at 2 p.m fm news 101 kxl invites you to listen to a very important roundtable discussion on violence in our schools join cooper banks and a distinguished panel of experts to discuss this issue made possible by cascadia behavioral health care the 2018 GOP gubernatorial primary debate continues now on a special edition of the Lars Larson Show. You're listening now, to the first and Lars only debate Larson. for 2018. Sorry about that. You'll get into the, uh, you'll, we want you to get your votes in, and I'll give you a reminder about that in a moment. Closing statements now, beginning with Sam. Okay, this is about contrast. This is about who can beat Kate Brown. In our opening question, these two fellows were bragging about how they will gladly break the law if they need to for political purposes. I'm going to follow the law. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to make the laws correct. I'm going to follow the law. Now, Newt, you, you must be proud of yourself for spending $3 million in a Republican primary. I would be embarrassed spending a million of it to slime me, and everything you said was dishonest. I am pro-life. I am pro-gun, 22nd Amendment. The, the, the Second Amendment is fine just the way it is, and I support our president. You lose on all three of, three of those. You lose on two of them. If we don't have a conservative running against Kate Brown, we're going to lose yet again. 32 years of this, putting a moderate candidate up there, we're going to lose again unless we have a real conservative, and that's me. Sam, thank you. Greg? Lars, this is our year. Listeners, watchers, this is our year. Kate Brown's approval rating is in the 40s. Unbelievable for an incumbent. If we don't get it done, we're not going to get it done. And I am a pragmatic conservative. I will win against Kate Brown. Nobody else can. Me. I have a proven track record of leadership of getting things done. I'm not afraid to jump into any fray. I will represent Oregon with calmness and the demeanor and the temperament that this our great state deserves. I'm going to ensure that every Oregonian has the opportunity to be exceptional. We've had that denied us with so much government overlay. We've got to pull those wraps off. Get rid of all these excessive permitting requirements. Get things done consistently. There's a lack of consistency, a lack of trust. I'll bring that back to our wonderful state, and we'll have the most prosperous times we've ever had. Greg, thanks very much. Newt? Sam, I may be old-fashioned, but uh, I still believe in telling the truth and not bullying people. And even the Oregon Tea Party think, thinks that's important. Lars, if your listeners are undecided in this race, I want them to think about three things. First, who has a proven track record for supporting limited government, for lowering taxes and protecting small businesses in the Second Amendment? You know, Greg and Sam can talk about it. I've done it. Second, I'd ask your listeners, who has the best combination of experience to do this job and do it well? I was born and raised in, in Roseburg. I understand rural Oregon. In, in Bend, I've grown businesses that employ hundreds of people. And as a doctor, I understand health care and how important it is to Oregonians. And I've been in Salem long enough to understand the complex problems in this state, but not long enough to be part of the problem. And third, who? I'd ask your listeners, who can end this losing streak, this three-decade Republican losing streak? 
I've won tough elections twice in overwhelmingly Democratic district, districts. I ask for your vote, and you and I together will defeat Governor Brown. Gentlemen, thank you. My sincere thanks to the candidates for making the time to appear here. I look forward to the debate this fall between the next governor and Governor Kate Brown if she shows up. You've been listening to the first and only 2018 Oregon gubernatorial debate with candidates Sam Carpenter, Greg Woldridge, and Newt Bueller, live on the Radio Northwest Network and its flagship station, FM News 101 KXL. You have three fine candidates here who could lead Oregon if you let one of them, a doctor, a businessman, and a naval officer. The Democrats offer you a former Secretary of State who failed to spot the corruption of John Kitzhaber right under her nose and then lacked the political courage to clean up the ethical mess that he left behind and prevent it from happening again. She tried to hide the fact that this state now exports a billion dollars worth of illegal drugs every year because her agencies refused to stop it. She declared this a sanctuary state that puts the privileges of criminal aliens ahead of its citizens. In November, you face a critical choice for Oregon. New leadership or more of the same. I hope all of you exercise your franchise and cast a ballot. Just one, please, each, because we are Republicans, and get those ballots in by Tuesday. My thanks to the Bloodwork Studio, to the candidates, and to our Radio Northwest Network. You're listening to The Lars Larson Show. FM News 101 KXL. This week, my friends at Northwest Armory feature Remington firearms and ammunition. Remington introduced the Model 870 pump shotgun more than 60 years ago, and it's one of the most popular of all time. 11 million sold. The Remington 8.